the micro influencing mm-hmm. part. Yeah. Why not just say influencer? Because I've what I've seen, what I've been seeing you doing is like quite a lot. That's just influencer <laughs> marketing. Yeah, I mean, so it your is... personal brand is very strong at this point. I'm sure, Thank like you. you know, if you work in any office, you know. <laughs> That, 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 that discussion is like a whole different, you know, it's, it's completely different. But, you know, how, like, yeah. you know, why not just say influencer and you're saying micro-influencer? I think, like, um, it just goes back to, so I never, ever used to say influencer. Whenever someone used to ask me, and I would just, like, just yeah. sit there and smile. Mm-hmm. Until I, I went for this workshop, and they were like, why are you not owning it? Yeah. Like, when you were head of marketing, you were like, yeah, I'm head of marketing. Mm-hmm. So why are you not owning it? Like, why don't you just say it? Um, so I think it goes back to that conversation. Um, just even for me to say micro influencer, that's like a like a big one for me. Like it sounds like such a tiny thing and like such a tiny aspect of this, but I think it's more of an internal thing mm-hmm. um, to I guess put put myself out there and put it out there as is. I've seen you. I've seen you working with very big brands. So of course I can't mention them because that's none of my business. But I've seen you working with like a lot of big brands. So I th- I don't think you're a micro influencer. You actually influence. Thank you. Yeah, because when you're talking <laughs> about like you know, uh, this was one of them was like even talking about people buying like apartment blocks and stuff. Yes. I mean, that's not micro influencing. <laughs> uh, you know, so micro think, influencer. If you can influence people to yeah, so purchase property, that is, that is also like a dialogue that um, maybe we need to change, including mm-hmm. myself. And mm-hmm. maybe it starts from within. Is so the the micro and influencer those those terminologies are largely on numbers, numbers of followers. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then on like when I when I think about how I work with brands. It's to do with numbers, but more the financial side. So mm. Like how much money am I able to pull in for this brand? Or how yeah. much like awareness? Um, so that's where the conversation is so different. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I agree. I need to have that conversation with myself yes. and change that, yeah. that dialogue as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think also like the biggest thing was, I remember, like, because I, I used to, I used to work with like, you know, Brands here and there, but nowadays I'm just okay. I mean, I'd rather just to do my thing mm-hmm. and not get limited with, you know, rules, regulations and stuff because yeah. of so many other things. Yeah. But one of the biggest things that I also like just came to to learn in that space as well is because at times influencers are also just pushed too hard because like, let's say if we go to a meeting, and one person asks you, like, okay, how many followers do you have? Person X has X number of followers. But people also, like, just buying followers as well because they want to appease, like, you know, the corporates or the brands that are paying people with bigger numbers. Yeah. And even buying views and all those things. But how do you deal with, with that and not succumb to the pressure? So I think, yeah. so one thing for sure is, I always say true to myself yeah. and true to like what I'm doing. The other thing is that brands and these bigger companies and bigger brands actually now have experts on the team and they can tell when you've bought followers. Because, yeah. and it's like an easy metrics. Like I feel like you could Google the metrics and do it yourself and you'd know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's where, you know, they would go, if they do, do go with an influencer that has bigger numbers and then they don't see the results. Yeah. And you've paid a lot, you know? Yeah, so, which most companies so actually... That, that has definitely changed. I feel yeah. like if I have to compare it to pre-COVID versus post-COVID, ah. the, the brands and the companies, they know. Yeah. They, they I know. know this one has bought for so, us. We're not getting yeah. engagement then, results. Exactly. And then again, Instagram is a lot of those bot followers are bots. Yeah. And Instagram or even TikTok, Facebook, they're, they're you know, saving out the bots and just deleting those accounts. So mm. you'll see like some people, some influencers will have, you know, let's say 10K and then you check like, one week later, 10 days later, it's yeah. dropped significantly. <laughs> and that's one of the things. But also, like, you know, I feel like it's such a competitive space to be in. And the culture in, 
in Kenya, in Nairobi, has been, you know, like a little cutthroat. Yeah. Um, and then that's where I really appreciate, you know, um, people like Eli. He had put up, you know, with the not going to lie, Eli. that link. He's an influencer. Eli um, Mwendo. Yeah. Yes. So okay. he had put up, this was like a while ago, and mm -hmm. he put, a, put this uh, link up where it's all anonymous. And he was like, you know, with the influencers, we don't even know sometimes what, what to charge, what is the correct rate to be charging, um, yeah. you know, the market rate. And, you know, there's just always someone that's going to do it for like a tenth of the price. So let's just have this as a way of sharing our rate cards and be very transparent with what we, what, how many followers we have, what our engagement looks like, and how much we're charging uh -huh. for whether it's a reel, whether it's for the month, and what that month would encompass. And, um, you know, just have, be really transparent. And I loved that, because I was like, that's so true. Like, if we're competing against each other, the only person that wins is that brand or the company. Yeah, the companies get to cut play yeah. you guys around like fiddles and you won't exactly. even know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the people that are losing at the end of it is us. Yeah. And I really, really, really appreciated that. Um, and the response that he got and I was following obviously what he was sharing, he was sharing like the responses I was mm -hmm. following. I think it was very eye-opening for mm -hmm. many, many people yeah. within the industry. Because some people would didn't even know companies can pay X amount of money for mm -hmm. such a thing. And then they're like, what? I've just been doing it for like pocket change. And Exactly. And I think it's uh, the best thing. It's like we, we, just educating ourselves, sharing knowledge here and yeah. there. It's not an easy space to be in. Definitely the way you've said. Yeah. Competition is stiff right now because anyone who's finishing school, what's the first thing they say they want to do? <laughs> influencing. Yeah. Yeah, influencing. But also, I think, like, changing that conversation around it. I feel like, I mean, I know I, I just use the word competition, but I think we need, we need to stop using that word. Mm -hmm. So the thing that Eli did, right? Like, it's stop, stop looking at each other as competition. Like, look at, look at working with each other as a team. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you, both of you or all of you will win. True, true. Uh, like we said, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> teamwork makes the dream work. And even apart from like now just influence.